All right, let's talk about the patent prototype made around approximately 1977. This is what you see, and actually, it's called the patent prototype because it was actually in the patent in 1979, although it was filed in 1977. So I believe it was created in 1977. This is believed to be the second prototype made, although there could have been a few variations in between that we don't know about. What's interesting about this one compared to the brass prototype, number one that I talked about in the last video, is that this one you're really starting to see more of the Floyd Rose features that you notice today and then in the earliest non-fine-tuning production versions with a few curious details. So what this one did has a lot, the main features it started having are, it had the post right here, so it's got the knife edge going into the post that you, that you screw in, right? That's common in a lot of Floyds even today. This one had a sustain block going in and it was bolted to the top of the base plate, right? Which is still a common feature. And then it has a spring, like a standard fender, a standard fender tremolo spring action right going on right here. What's interesting is the bolts are really close together on this one. And the sustain block is pretty thin compared to the earlier non-fine tuning Floyd Rose models. And another curious thing is it's a, it's actually string through the, so the ball ends of the string kind of just stop right here. So you did not actually have to cut the ball ends of the string because you're not clamping. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't come in. The strings don't come in straight down like a modern Floyd. And then you clamp it with the insert block, right? In the, in the modern Floyds, and even starting with the FRT one, uh, you, you got a screw and then it kind of bolts down the, uh, screw to, to lock the screw sideways like this, right? Whereas this one, the strings are going over the top and it clamps and locks on the top. So this is a double locking tremolo, which it's actually pretty interesting. My guess is they had to revise this because as you can see, each clamp has two screws and that probably was a little too time consuming or it just didn't work out that well. Hence why they read it, why Floyd probably redesigned it into the FRT one. So it did not have this feature and therefore you have to cut off the ball ends of the string. But I think this is kind of curious. So the original prototype version of the FRT one, I guess you could say was string through and it clamped on top. Pretty interesting. And actually there are some later on, there were some Japanese makers that implemented this in this sign and like in the mid eighties and some of their tremolo units, pretty interesting. Another difference, I guess, compared to like the FRT1 and the early non-fine tuning Floyd Roses is this piece right here, it looks like it bolts right on to the base plate right here. So it bolts right on it. So there's a lots of bolting onto the base plate going on where up, whereas, and then the saddles are on top of this piece right here. And it looks like you can adjust the intonation probably with one of these screws. I should probably read the patent, then I'd know. Well, that's what it looks like to me. And you got the trem tremolo bar right here. And it looks like this tremolo bar had a, it was it was longer, and then it just just a little bit of an angle. I'm kind of I'm kind of curious what that would look like. There aren't any known photos of this, unfortunately. But if you do have one, I'd love to see it. The locking nut is also the thinner one. Looks like it direct drop into like a fender nut or a Gibson and so it was smaller than like a modern Floyd Rose locking nut and I'm kind of curious why he stopped doing this because it makes sense right it would make sense that it'd be easier just to make this thinner right here so it could be drop in and you wouldn't have to route out more of it or kind of do a bunch of weird stuff afterwards my guess is there is something there are issues that happen with the locking nut being that small and that's why he had to change it. But I guess I really don't know. Um, I'm kind of curious why they want to keep it small like that. But there's, my guess is there is a reason for it. You can see here you got the three clamps, right? Each string is locked down and uh, there are two strings with one clamp, right? So that's, it's pretty neat. And what he would do after this is, why, but while this was, this was this October 1979, so when he was awarded this patent, he pretty much had the FRT1 finished, right? So he filed for this in 77. So this unit was completed in 1977, most likely. And then, of course, by the time it was awarded, he was still prototyping, 
a lot of different aspects. And in 1978, that's when he gave like an FRT one to Randy Hansen, I believe, and then Eddie Van Halen got his in late 78, early 79, some around, sometime around there. But it, it's pretty interesting. It kind of gives you a glimpse of the process of how the Floyd Rose non-fine tuning versions evolve over the years. And this is going to eventually evolve into the FRT1, or what's called the Rose Tremolo. It was originally called the Rose Tremolo system. The Japanese call it FRT1, and that's what I'm going to talk about in the next video.